and free on all platforms. Frightening scene in the sky, sparks flying from a United flight that took off from Newark bound for Sao Paulo. The plane burning off fuel before an emergency landing. The hurricane threat, Bermuda bracing for Fiona's strike with impacts expected up and down the east coast as the tropics turn active. Five systems now churning over the Atlantic, including one we are keeping a very close eye on. Backlash building as Vladimir Putin puts hundreds of thousands of Russian men on notice they may be headed to war. The protests challenging the Kremlin in the streets and the race by some Russians to get out by any means possible. We're joined by the former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. Defending the planet, it may sound like a movie, but it's a real-life mission. An inside look at NASA's ambitious plan to fly a spacecraft into an asteroid nearly 7 million miles away. A test that could one day save us all. Really a zero risk, high reward test of our ability to uh, defend our planet. The artist formerly known as Kanye West, Lindsay Davis, sitting down with Ye, one of the world's most well-known and at times controversial celebrities. A wide-ranging interview on social media, mental health, co-parenting with Kim Kardashian and his big business in the world of fashion. Is that going to be affordable and accessible for people? Because I know some of your sneakers are thousands of dollars. Uh, I mean, if it's up to Meezy, Yeezy, it'd be Freezy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's Hispanic Heritage Month as we talk to one influencer using TikTok to debunk Latino and Caribbean stereotypes. How he's using the power of that social media platform to tell the full story and celebrate all that his culture has to offer. And good evening, I'm Phil Lipoff. Lindsay Davis is on assignment, but we will have more of her exclusive interview with Ye coming up later on in the show. Thanks for streaming with us tonight. We're gonna to begin with that monster hurricane barreling toward Bermuda and the tropics now suddenly active as we officially begin fall. Fiona has sustained winds of 130 miles per hour and the outer bands have now reached the island nation whose residents are bracing for what will be a long night ahead. Earlier today, boarding up stores in downtown Hamilton with the wind already howling. About 360 miles away, a sea drone on the ocean's surface capturing 50-foot waves. Hurricane hunters inside the eye of the storm and Fiona's effects are already moving parallel to the east coast with high surf and rip currents, threats into the weekend. Forecasters say after a quiet summer, the tropics are certainly heating up. ABC's senior meteorologist Rob Marciano is in Bermuda tracking Fiona and what could be the next hurricane, something people from Florida to the Gulf Coast need to keep an eye on. Tonight, with Fiona's outer bands moving in, Bermuda is boarding up. Officials here sounding the alarm. We want residents to please take this storm seriously. Locals grabbing essentials while there's still time. Power crews assembled and ready. This is the time where Bermudans depend on us, and we will rise and make sure that they are protected and that they get turned on as soon as possible. Hurricane Fiona is a Category 4 beast. C-130s flying inside the storm, measuring hurricane force winds now out to 70 miles from the center. With the eye of Fiona, forecast to pass west of the island. That puts Bermuda on the bad side of this storm. And you can see the waves turning here on the south coast. This is where the most punishing blow of Hurricane Fiona will be. As many as eight deaths across the Caribbean now attributed to Fiona, four days after the storm made its first landfall in Puerto Rico. More than 900,000 customers remain without power there. And tonight, officials cannot say when it will be restored in the hardest hit areas. And Rob joins us now from Bermuda. Rob, give us Fiona's latest track. And I know you're also closely monitoring the tropics and a threat possibly to Florida or the Gulf Coast next week. Yeah, that's right, Phil. Very active and uh, very active here. As a matter of fact, last couple of hours on the south coast of Bermuda, we've seen the wind and the surf kick up. The center of the storm still 250 miles from our to our south and west, but accelerating in this direction. Here are the stats, the latest ones for Fiona. 130 mile an hour winds, and the movement now is at 20 miles an hour. And the satellite picture shows that that uh, that eye, which is now 30 miles across, 
and the wind field expanding 450 miles across the tropical storm force winds. So it makes it a massive and a very damaging storm. Computer model showing it passing just to our west, but it's close to it's about 100 miles uh, abreast of us. So any jog to the east will be right in the thick of the cat two and three and four winds. Either way, we'll get slammed. And then it rockets off toward uh, Atlantic Canada and Nova Scotia making a landfall there Saturday morning, and there will be a damaging extra tropical storm with hurricane force winds there. All right, uh, the uh, disturbance in the Caribbean you alluded to, this one is likely to become our next tropical storm probably by Monday. Our computer models, you see all the different lines there. Most of them take it to the Gulf Coast or Florida sometime next week, and most of them also bring it to hurricane strength. So once we get through Fiona tonight and tomorrow for our friends in Canada, uh, we've got something to worry about in the uh, always fearful Gulf of Mexico. Phil. Yeah, we knew it was a little too quiet uh, for comfort. Uh, Rob, outside of the tropics, when people on the East Coast wake up tomorrow, word is it will be clear that summer is over. All right, so it's all connected. Yeah, it's going to be cold tomorrow. That is a deep trough of cold air that's diving into the northeast. That's actually what's steering Fiona and will probably block the next storm and keep it towards the Gulf of Mexico as opposed to turning it out to sea. So it's involved, and it's you're going to feel it if you live in the northeast tomorrow. Look at some of these wind chills. This is the coldest air of the season. I uh, feel like 40 or so in, in Boston, Scranton. On the way to the office, it'll feel like the upper 30s. So the puffy coats are coming out, Phil, <laughs> as we head now uh, getting closer to October and the first uh, day of fall. Fall begins tonight. Yes. Good thing I never really put mine away. All right, Rob, thanks so much. <laughs> Now to the war in Ukraine and the backlash is building as Russia, uh, Russia's Vladimir Putin tells hundreds of thousands of men there they may soon be headed to war. Some Russians are bravely protesting in the streets, others just racing to get out. ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge in Ukraine. Tonight, the backlash in Russia as Putin moves to conscript men into the army to fight in Ukraine. <laughs> Protesters shouting, no war. And this man screaming, I won't die for Putin, before being led away. Police arresting more than 1,300 people in 40 cities, according to human rights activists, who say some of those detained were then drafted to fight. And this, the scene at Russia's land border with Georgia, lines more than 10 miles long, people trying to flee the country to avoid the draft. A travel data company tonight telling ABC News that there are no seats available on flights leaving Moscow for the next four days. Demand soaring for flights to nations like Armenia, Turkey and Serbia, where Russians can travel visa-free. And when Putin announced the draft, desperation online. Data from Google showing a spike with many Russians Googling how to break your arm at home. Now, Russia already mobilizing men to fight relatives saying goodbye. And with Putin also moving to annex a large part of eastern and southern Ukraine, widespread condemnation of the UN. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken underlining Ukraine's existence is at stake. If Russia stops fighting, the war ends. If Ukraine stops fighting, Ukraine ends. Phil, tomorrow in Russian-occupied parts of Ukraine, the Russian-controlled authorities will begin their so-called referendums on joining Russia. One Russian-appointed official saying the authorities will be going door-to-door -door accompanied by the police so people can vote at home. Phil? All right, Tom, thank you. And for more on the latest developments, I want to bring in William Taylor, former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. Ambassador, welcome. Thanks for taking the time. Oh, President thank you, Phil. Good to be here. It's good to have you. President Putin has hundreds of thousands of Russian men now on notice heading into the winter months. So what is your assessment of Putin's latest move to call up more reservists? We're talking we're nearly seven months into this fight now, and he has been pushed back consistently by the Ukrainians. What do you make of this move? So this seems to me, Phil, to be a sign of desperation. As you say, the Ukrainians are pushing him back. They're winning on the battlefield. They're winning on the battlefield. He's running out of soldiers. He thinks by instituting this draft or this call-up, he may be able to replace these soldiers that he's losing day after day on, on the battlefield. And so this is a sign that he is not winning. This is an attempt to change the subject. He, he's got a problem domestically, Phil. I mean, he's got problems on his right and his left. 
his announcement of this uh, of this mobilization has sent has sent people fleeing from the country. Yeah, and I would imagine it's it's making some of the population there in that country look at this differently. Oh, now my son might have to go because people aren't coming back. Maybe that makes people think, okay, this isn't exactly how you know Russian media has been portraying it. Uh, Putin is supporting annexation referendums. You know uh, that Moscow officials have planned to hold an occupied Ukrainian territory there in the east uh, of the country. These votes are likely to be obviously not free not fair. And at the U.N. yesterday, President Biden accused Russia of significant violations of the U.N. charter. Talk about the significance of these referendums, because you can say they're not free and fair, but there's a price to pay here for a lot of people. There is a price to pay. They won't be free and fair. The model, of course, is what they did in Crimea uh, in 2014, when they illegally annexed Crimea, and then shortly thereafter had, again, one of these sham referenda um, which at the point of guns, literally at the point of guns, people were forced to, to vote. Even that, they didn't vote in favor of joining Russia. Even under those circumstances, under circumstances of occupation, uh, they, the Crimeans did not vote for it. But the Russians said that 97 percent of the people in Crimea voted to join Russia. Just mm -hmm. ludicrous. That's what will happen in these, in these sham referenda as well. The Ukrainians even more so now uh, than, than before, do not want to join Russia. Uh, the Ukrainians, like the rest of the world, know that these are, are, are meaningless in any legal sense. They, they mean nothing. And the Ukrainians are now fighting for their existence in any case. They will continue to fight for their existence. They're not going to change the, what they're fighting for or how they're fighting, how hard they're fighting, just because there's some sham referendum. No, they'll continue to try to push the Russians out of their country, which is what they've been doing in the north around Kharkiv. So they know they can do it. They know the Ukrainians can do it. So the Ukrainians will continue to do it. You ask about the international effect. Again, no one will recognize these. Uh, this is for a domestic audience. This is because Putin is losing support for this war that he wants to do some sleight of hand that says, well, actually, this is really Russia. So now it's really the, the Ukrainians and the West against us. This is just a domestic effort to raise attention um, and raise support for a war that is otherwise unsupported and unpopular. So it appears he's, you know, I don't know at this point we can say doubling down. He's done this over and over again. Um, but I ask this question because almost every time something happens like this, we do ask the question. Maybe it's because, you know, the, the world is hoping that there is a, the answer will change. But is he looking for, does he have a way to negotiate um, out of this? He is looking for, I think you're exactly right, Phil. I think he is looking for a way out. Um, it's not obvious how he gets there. What is obvious is that he can control what Russians think. And so he can tell a story about how he actually really got what he wanted um, out, of this, out of this war um, and then try to negotiate. The problem for President Putin is the Ukrainians are on a roll. The Ukrainians have confidence that they're going to win this war and they're not eager to negotiate. You served as ambassador to Ukraine uh, and obviously still have close contacts on the ground there. Uh, at this stage in the conflict, what are you hearing from Ukrainians about the state of play? So I was in Ukraine uh, nearly two weeks ago, just about two weeks ago, um, in Kyiv, had good conversations with friends. I do have a lot of friends there. Um, and, and they were telling, this was when the counteroffensive was really getting started. And they were very elated they were ecstatic at the, at the sign of this kind of success, military success. So they are very high. They are, their morale is high. They are absolutely convinced they are going to win. And, the, and, they're, and they're so appreciative, Bill, of these weapons that we're providing them. It's, it's, being, it's, a, it's a game changer. They know it, and they're putting them to good use. Yeah, it certainly has been a game changer. And, and I think that it's an exercise in, in strength and conviction uh, that the entire world is watching, inspiring so many when just a, a day or two before this, I, I was in Poland a day before uh, Russia attacked, and they thought within three days his army would be at the Ukrainian-Polish border, and that boy, that is not the case. Um, Ambassador William Taylor, it's so great uh, to have your expertise on this subject. We, we do thank you for taking the time tonight. Thank you, Phil. Good, very good to be here.
Next, former President Trump was delivered a major legal setback in the battle over those classified documents from Mar-a-Lago. A three-judge appeals court sided unanimously with the Justice Department, allowing their criminal investigation to go forward. How is President Trump responding? ABC's Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas. Tonight, Donald Trump dealt a blow by an appeals court panel of three federal judges, two of whom he appointed himself. They ruled the Justice Department can once again start working with the more than 100 classified documents seized from Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. This is the former president claims he declassified those documents, making this highly questionable statement. If you're the president of the United States, you can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it. No, a president can't declassify sensitive documents just by thinking about it. There is a process. The appeals court was blunt, ruling Team Trump had provided no evidence that any of these records were declassified. What's more, the judge is right. We cannot discern why Trump would have an individual interest in or need for any of the 100 documents with classification markings. Finally, they say even if Trump did declassify the documents, that does not make them his property. Concluding, the declassification argument is a red herring because declassifying an official document would not change its content or render it personal. The appeals court ruling was a stinging rebuke to Florida Judge Aileen Cannon, a Trump appointee who, at his request, named an independent special master to review all 11,000 documents seized from Mar-a-Lago and refused to let the FBI keep working with the classified material. The appeals court determined Judge Cannon had likely abused her discretion that, of course, the FBI should be allowed to work with the material. The judge is writing, It is self-evident that the public has a strong interest in ensuring that the storage of the classified records did not result in exceptionally grave damage to the national security. But the former president now leveling unfounded accusations that perhaps the FBI had planted the documents. The problem that you have is they go into rooms, they won't let anybody near them. They wouldn't even let them in the same building. Did they drop anything into those piles? Or did they do it later? His attorneys have not made those claims in court where it is illegal to lie. And tonight, the special master telling them if they're going to make such damning accusations, they will have to provide proof. And Pierre Thomas joins me now from Washington. Pierre, what action is this special master in this case taking as the Trump team is now pushed for accountability for their claims? Well, the special master will no longer be dealing with the classified documents, but he will oversee disputes about the roughly 11,000 other documents seized at Mar-a-Lago. And Phil, the special master told Trump's attorneys today they need to provide a detailed list of every single document they deem covered by some kind of privilege. Phil? And the case continues. Pierre Thomas, thank you. And we head overseas now where the ire in Iran continues to build after the death of a young woman while in custody of the morality police. Her crime? She's accused of violating the headscarf law. The protests ongoing for days now, turning deadly. Here's ABC's chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raditz. Tonight, Protests raging across Iran over the suspicious death of 22-year-old Masa Amini while in police custody. Amini arrested last week by Iran's so-called morality police, who say that she was wearing her headscarf improperly. She reportedly collapsed and fell into a coma at a detention center and was later pronounced dead at a local hospital. Iranian authorities denying accusations that Amini suffered blows to the head during her arrest, saying it was a heart ailment that killed her. But her family disputes that claim, as do the thousands of Iranian women taking to the streets. <laughs> Videos filmed by demonstrators show women burning their headscarves or hijabs and cutting their hair. Clashes between police and protesters turning deadly. At least 17 have been killed. President Biden addressing the protests on the world stage. We stand with the brave citizens and the brave women of Iran who right now are demonstrating to secure their basic rights. 
The administration going further, saying the morality police are responsible for Amini's death, imposing sanctions on them as well as several senior leaders, quote, for abuse and violence against Iranian women and the violation of the rights of peaceful Iranian protesters. Today, the ultra-conservative president of Iran, Ibrahim Raisi, in New York, pressed by ABC News on the killing of Amini. What are you afraid the world is going to see? saying he has assured her family that the incident is being investigated, adding that deaths in police custody are not unique to Iran. And Martha Raditz joins us now. Martha, you have made a number of trips to Iran over the years, speaking to women there on the ground. In fact, you were just there in February. Uh, we've seen protests now for six straight days. How significant do you think this is? You know, Phil, it really is significant. A senior State Department official called the protests really extraordinary. And I have noticed in the past few years women really testing the limits with those headscarves, pushing them back further. But Iranian authorities do not put up with protests, so I really do believe this could get bloodier in the coming days. Phil. Mm. All right. Martha Raditz, thank you. Conspiracy theorist Alex Jones took the stand today at his defamation trial. Jones is trying now to limit what he has to pay for promoting the lie that the 2012 Sandy Hook school shooting did not happen. Jones has been found liable in two similar lawsuits, and one last month, one of the trials ordered him to pay $50 million in damages to the parents of one of the children killed. Uh, Jones got combative in court today. Joining me now for more is Aaron Katursky, who's been following all of this. Uh, Aaron, thanks so much for, for taking us through this. Let's start by what is this case? What has happened? This is the damages phase of a defamation trial. Alex Jones has said for years that, that the Sandy Hook school shooting uh, not only didn't happen, he said it was a government staged hoax because the government wanted to take away your guns. And the parents were crisis actors. The parents were crisis actors and it was all staged. And, and he was able to profit off of it uh, by selling products to his audience that was you know, eating all of this up. And, and, and the judge had already found him liable for defamation by default. And now the question is, how much does he have to pay for it? All right, and so that's where we are in this case right now. And today it got pretty contentious. Uh, let's take a look first. Why don't you show a little respect? Objection, Judge. I think that if you get what you get in this court. Objection. You have families in this courtroom here that lost children, sisters, wives, moms. Is this a struggle session? Are we in China? I've already said I'm sorry hundreds of times, and, I, and I'm done saying I'm sorry. All right. When I first saw that and he said, I'm done saying sorry, I, I first thought that was for the audience, his audience, that maybe he looked to his audience too weak that he said he was sorry because he'd gone with this for so many years. Um, why do that at that point? Uh, in fact, the judge also thought he was being a bit performative in, uh. in some of the answers, and, and she admonished him to say, you're not performing for the media, uh. for your audience, you're, you're testifying. This is, you got to follow the, the script here. But Jones, I, I think, may have been bothered by some of the questions the plaintiff's attorney was asking. Like? Uh, he was saying that bringing back this notion that, that Jones had called the parents actors, mm -hmm. played a clip of one of the parents giving a, a, a tearful interview about the loss of his, his six-year-old daughter. Robbie Parker was sitting right there in the courtroom, one of eight families now suing Jones for defamation. And, and the plaintiff's attorney pointed right to Robbie Parker and said, he's real, isn't mm -hmm. he? And there's Alex Jones that says, yeah. And, and you know, do you want to apologize? And that's when he just sort of erupted and said, I'm done apologizing. And, and when you heard the plaintiff's attorney say, do we need to show some respect here? Yeah. Uh, that's when, when Jones just continued with this struggle session. Not sure that helps the yeah, struggle session. Struggle session for the parents. I'm not sure that helps his cause. Um, what else stood out to you in court today? I think there, there were a couple of other moments where uh, the, the plaintiff's attorney was trying to, to help the jury understand that Jones was just deliberate in what he was doing and that he was making a ton of money. He kept asking, you know, how much did you make today? How much mm -hmm. did you make yesterday? Asking for all of the profits to show that this is really, uh, in the plaintiff's opinion, a bottomless 
pit of money, and and the jury is free to to award whatever whatever they want. And 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 at one point, um, Jones denied knowing how much Infowars was making on a daily basis, and and the plaintiff's attorney was quite incredulous. All right. Well, fifty million in one case, and we'll see what happens in this one. Aaron Katursky, thank you so much. Thanks, Phil. And when we come back, the coach of the Boston Celtics in trouble tonight for an alleged consensual relationship with a staff member. We're going to have the latest for you. Plus, Lindsay's conversation with Ye. She asks him about so much, including his take on social media. And so social media, you feel, is that more hurtful or beneficial to you? That's one of my favorite questions, this interview. You'll hear the answer, but up next, critical NASA mission that one day could save the world. It's the stuff out of movies, especially if it works. Next. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. Here at the White House. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. We made it. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 12 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. As of today, in a big way, we have inaugurated ABCNews.com. A lot has changed in our world since Peter made that announcement. But what hasn't changed is the commitment to groundbreaking reporting and innovation at ABCNews.com. And here's to everything ahead. This is ABC News Live Prime. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Live reporting, breaking news, exclusives, award-winning, powerful, eye-opening. ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Streaming weeknights. Right now, with so much at stake, Sunday mornings, this is the place. Taking on the tough questions with straightforward reporting. Thank you for making ABC's This Week with George the number one Sunday morning news show versus the competition. Welcome to This Week. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. It was an extraordinary story. A computer salesman was supposed to report to prison to begin a 17-year sentence. They let him turn himself into jail with no escort. No one thought he would run. How do you evade capture for 25 years? How do you do that? Now, join the search, following the U.S. Marshals as they uncover new leads in a global manhunt. Can you help catch this fugitive? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Listen and join the all-new hunt wherever you get your podcast. Welcome back. A chaotic scene on an American Airlines flight from Mexico to Los Angeles. A passenger arrested for allegedly punching a flight attendant. Video showing him hitting the crew member in the back of the head. The airline has now banned him from future flights. Next tonight, NASA's mission to save humanity one day in the future. At least 30,000 asteroids are hurtling around in space, and a critical test Monday may go a long way to ensure that one of those asteroids doesn't one day wipe out the planet. Gio Benitez has more on this key mission and what it means for our future. Hitting an asteroid is a tough thing to do. Humanity has never done that before. Tonight, NASA on the verge of a new frontier in space exploration. And it's something that may one day save us all. 
we've all seen the disaster movies where we see tidal waves and we have, uh, you know, material that's ejected into the atmosphere. It could be a worst case scenario, uh, which is why it's really important to test this. An important test because asteroids do in fact hit Earth. In 1908, on June 30th, a roughly 50 meter sized asteroid hit in a forested area in Siberia called Tunguska. The blast area is roughly the size of the Los Angeles basin. And more recently, in 2013, we had a smaller asteroid, just 19 meters across, streak above the city of Chelyabinsk in Russia, missed the city, but it did come close and put about 1,500 people in the hospital, collapsed a number of buildings, broke nearly every window in the city. So about a million people got very lucky that day. A direct impact would have leveled the city. And there's countless other threats out there that could have devastating consequences. We've seen asteroids come through the atmosphere and kind of explode and cause some damage. And thankfully so far, nothing recent enough that it really has a large, large impact on our civilization, but it could happen. That's why NASA isn't waiting for humanity's luck to run out. Launching the DART mission aboard SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and DART. The mission lifting off last year has been hurtling towards two asteroids with intertwined orbits called Didymus and Dimorphos, nearly 7 million miles from Earth. Dimorphos is orbiting around Didymus, kind of like the uh, moon orbits around the Earth. Dimorphos may be smaller than Didymus, but it's still big, over 500 feet wide, about the size of a large football stadium. A rock of that size hitting the Earth would have enormous amount of energy if it hits the Earth. Something uh, like that would, would level a small state, a small country. Yeah, you heard that right, a small country. These two asteroids are not a threat to Earth, but scientists say the pair have perfect conditions for this first of its kind test. It's really a zero risk, high reward test of our ability to uh, defend our planet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run a small spacecraft into the smaller of the two asteroids, and it is going to change its velocity by a small amount. These two asteroids are slowly moving around each other. So that tiny little change of velocity that you make to one asteroid, you can see it almost immediately. To make the collision happen Monday, a smaller probe will be jettisoned from the larger spacecraft ramming into the asteroid. NASA will be relying on smart nav technology that includes a sun sensor, star tracker, and rollout solar arrays to keep the spacecraft light. But it comes with a catch. About two minutes out, we have to stop maneuvering and we're moving at six kilometers a second. So if you actually look at that on the map, it's as if we were over the Indy 500 when we stop maneuvering, and then we simply have to coast all the way to Baltimore, and we have to land inside Camden Yards. It's a remarkable amount of precision for a small nudge that could have giant implications for planetary defense if successful. NASA hopes to measure the altered course of the asteroid caused by the collision. Within days here, we should know by exactly how much we've been able to change its velocity. And that's the whole point of the mission. Make a tiny change in the velocity because that's all it takes to protect the Earth in general from most asteroid impacts. And while a successful mission may ensure humanity's ability to deflect a future threat, it's only half the battle. Tracking asteroids in our solar system is key. Now, right now, the vast majority of the asteroids that are large enough to destroy a city are untracked. A sobering reality that will soon change. Our ability is just about to take a quantum leap forward, and that's because the world's largest telescope for finding tracking asteroids is just about to have first light next year. Called the Vera Rubin Observatory, it's a joint venture under construction in Chile that will be a game changer in asteroid detection. This telescope is going to track asteroids at a rate about 10 or times more than all other telescopes combined. So that's really going to help us find a lot more asteroids. The observatory and missions like DART offering a last line of defense for our planet to help protect the future of humanity on Earth. While on the ISS, you're struck by the fact that the moon is so many craters there, craters on top of crater. And you go, wait a second, the Earth gets hit more often than the moon. From this point forward, if it happens while we're here, that's not bad luck anymore. That's us not doing our job at protecting this planet. And that's what DART's about.
Amazing. Our thanks to Gio Benitez for that. And still ahead here on Prime, he went on the run just before being sentenced for bribing officials with cash, parties, and gifts in a $35 billion scheme where authorities just caught up with Fat Leonard. And how do unborn babies feel about the food you eat? See the reactions recorded inside the womb. They can create an eyesore in front yards, even enter your home. But do you know just how many ants there are on Earth? We take a look at ant population by the numbers. But first, our tweet of the day, the Power Rangers reminding us all that it is the first day of fall. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 12 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. Here at the White House. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. We made it. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. America is being poisoned with fentanyl, and we don't even know it. Just heard my wife screaming. She told me they had just died. 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. Keep breathing, come on. It's poison, it's pure poison. A few grains of salt worth of fentanyl will kill you. Just my agency has seized enough to kill the entire country. ABC News Live presents Poisoned, America's Fentanyl Crisis, the powerful series, streaming free on ABC News Live. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. Welcome back. If it really is a bug's life, a new global research project is evidence that ants are living large, very large. Ants now by the numbers. A group of scientists in Hong Kong released a paper this week that calculated 20 quadrillion ants now colonizing the planet. That number is 20, followed by a staggering 15 zeros. With world's human population expected to reach 8 billion this November, that's about 12.5 million ants per person. You look to the heavens for another comparison. It's estimated our galaxy has about 100 billion stars. That's an eye-popping number, but it's nothing really compared to the army of ants. The total mass of all those ants adds up to about 12 megatons of dry carbon, more than all wild birds and mammals combined, and reportedly the equivalent weight of two pyramids of Giza. So what on Earth can top that? Well, water is about it. According to a 2019 survey by NOAA, there's enough water in the world to fill 352 quintillion one-gallon jugs. And while pesky to homeowners, scientists say ants do do important work like aerating soil and helping dead forests decompose. And with some insect populations threatened, they plan to turn their attention now to make sure this bug's life is not. And we still have a lot to get to here on Prime. He's been called a creative genius for his music and fashion, also criticized for some of his actions. Kanye West telling us about his current passions and what he says ended his deals with Adidas and Gap. And we're joined by one TikToker who is using the platform to make sure the Hispanic and Latino communities learn more about their own culture. But first, a look at our top trending stories on abcnews.com. National parks are incredibly safe places. A crime will happen. Hey, my mom. My wife had fallen in really critical condition. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. There's still a lot of questions we need to ask. There were small things that didn't totally add up. 
This is two lives for Harold that have died now. I was shocked. Something's not right. Admit it. These days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. I know what happened, and I'm not guilty. Why the fascination with criminal trials? Figure out what's really out there. She revealed she had murdered his family. I know in my heart that he did this. It's the time of suspicion. The ending's really tough. You don't know whether truth is going to be difficult to find unless you try to find it. Need a ride? Sean Nolan, people are gonna start to talk. Oh, let them talk. Simone Clark, FBI. And the fact that I'm here should scare the hell out of you. I'm not 25. If I want a real career, I gotta shine right out the gate. It's all right. We got this. We're fast. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news. Free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. With Fiona's outer bands moving in, Bermuda is boarding up. Officials here sounding the alarm. We want residents to please take this storm seriously. Locals grabbing essentials while there's still time. Power crews assembled and ready. This is the time where Bermudans depend on us, and we will rise and make sure that they are protected and that they get turned on as soon as possible. Hurricane Fiona is a Category 4 beast. C-130s flying inside the storm, measuring hurricane force winds now out to 70 miles from the center. With the eye of Fiona forecast to pass west of the island, that puts Bermuda on the bad side of this storm. And you can see the waves turning here on the south coast. This is where the most punishing blow of Hurricane Fiona will be. As many as eight deaths across the Caribbean now attributed to Fiona, four days after the storm made its first landfall in Puerto Rico. More than 900,000 customers remain without power there. Officials cannot say when it will be restored in the hardest hit areas. In Indiana, a state judge has blocked a law that would have banned abortion after the 13th week of pregnancy, with some exceptions. The law went into effect a week ago. The judge issuing a preliminary injunction against the ban. Abortions will now be able to resume up to 20 weeks after fertilization. The law had exceptions in place if the woman's life was at risk, lethal fetal anomalies, and cases of rape or incest. In her decision, the judge said there was reasonable likelihood the law infringes on Indiana's constitution. Boston Celtics head coach Ime Odoka is reportedly facing a one-year suspension. Sources tell ESPN it's due to an intimate consensual affair he had with a female member of the franchise's staff. If true, that would be a violation of the organization's guidelines. Such a penalty would be unprecedented. Assistant coach Joe Mazzula would likely become Boston's interim coach for the season. Udoka joined the Celtics last summer and has been in a long-term relationship with actress Nia Long since 2010. The man behind the biggest bribery scandal ever in the U.S. Navy recaptured. Captured in Caracas, Venezuela, trying to board a flight, the man known as Fat Leonard has been caught. His real name, Leonard Francis, a worldwide manhunt was on with Interpol notices going out for the big personality military contractor who orchestrated the largest bribery scheme in Navy history, obtaining secret information by giving lavish gifts. He went on the run right before his sentencing, disappearing from house arrest now captured again. 
Tesla is recalling more than one million vehicles. The company warning its automatic windows may pinch fingers when closing. They're supposed to stop if an obstruction is detected. The recall involves certain versions of the Model 3, Model Y, Model S, and Model X. Tesla says owners will be able to fix the problem with an over-the-air software update. No need to bring cars in to be serviced. Does this look like a smile to you? Researchers in England seem to think so. Apparently, this is the face one fetus made after the mother ate carrots. And this is the not-so-happy face the fetus made after the expectant mother ate kale. The 4D scans part of a study from Durham University, which examined the fetuses of 100 women who were between 32 to 36 weeks pregnant. The study's lead researcher concludes those two faces prove fetal reactions to flavors in the womb, and that a healthy diet can be an acquired taste. Last week, Ye claimed that he never read a book, but based on his conversation with our Lindsay Davis, he's at least read parts of the Bible. Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, doesn't give many interviews, but he recently sat down for more than an hour with Lindsay, where he talked about everything from co-parenting with Kim Kardashian, his brand battles, the private school he opened, and his future in politics. Followed the artist formerly known as Kanye West for nearly 20 years, at times illuminating him as one of the greatest creatives of all time. But the light of scrutiny also shines just as brightly, with many critical of his occasional outbursts on social media. And so social media, you feel, is that more hurtful or beneficial to you? That's one of my favorite questions, this interview. I mean, we can use a car to rush somebody to the hospital or we could use a car and accidentally hit somebody while we're rushing somebody to the hospital. So it's all in how we use it. Now, back up on my family, move your hands. And that's how he uses social media, as a vehicle to amplify his voice. Something he says he's also had to do in order to successfully co-parent with his ex-wife, Kim Kardashian. The couple's focus on their children was evident in the first season of The Kardashians. No matter what we're going through, I always want my kids to be around their dad as much as possible and just to have their mornings with dad and get dropped off at school. This is the mother of my children, and I apologize for any stress that I have caused even in my frustration because God calls me to be stronger, but also ain't nobody else gonna be causing no stress either. I need this person to be least stressed and a best sound mind and as calm as possible to be able to raise those children at the end of the day. Do you feel you have a voice as you're co-parenting now? I do have a voice, but I had to fight for it. There's this, this thing that's like, that, that hurts you when you when you have to like scream about what your kids are wearing or you know or you have to say it like a million times over and it's just little nuances where there was a parallel to what was what was happening at Gap what was happening at Adidas and what was happening in my home it was all a, a kind of a disregard for the voice of something that I co-created I co-created the children. I co-created the product at Adidas. I co-created the product at Gap. And I let everybody know that there's actually a through line, there's a parallel, and the parallel does touch on discrimination. Even within your marriage? Yeah. I want my kids to go to Donda, and I have to fight for a say-so, because they're just programmed. It's just like, hey, all the kids are going to Sierra Canyon. No, I'm their dad. Like, it has to be co-parenting. It has, it's not up to only the woman. Like, men have a choice also. Men's voices matter. Donda Academy is a private school he created named after his late mother, Donda West. Donda Academy. Give me a sense of why you decided you wanted to create a school and, and what the mission is of the school. It's a, it's a gospel school, so we spread we spread the gospel. We, the kids sing gospel. And to build a school that 
gives kids practical tools that they need in a world post the iPhone being created. And that would be farming, going from seed to community, um, engineering for shelters, like just learning practical skills, like skills like uh, carpentry, like stuff that they don't teach as much. Ye considers himself a visionary, not just in music or education, but in the world of fashion. Recently turning to Twitter to post the termination of his Yeezy brand collaboration with Gap as he remains in an ongoing legal battle with Adidas to receive full ownership of his line. The Gap provided a statement to ABC News tonight saying in part, we are confident we have been in compliance with the terms of our agreement since the outset and we will continue to work amicably to unwind it. Above all, we wish Ye well. You did use social media to show all the restrictions that Adidas and Gap have put on you. So how do you move forward now in the fashion industry when they're saying you can't even not only show Yeezy products, but anything bearing that likeness? Oh, we got some new lawyers. We really had to level up and show them, really show them who's, you know, who's the new boss in town, that I'm the boss of me. I'm no longer just the, the man riding the top of the, the polo horse. I'm not just the mascot in the middle of games, you know, getting the crowd hyped up saying, hey, wear this, do this. But, you know, just learn, you know, financial engineering, learn how to learn how to really run a company. You know, I had this new, this new year's resolution that I was only gonna talk to people who listen to me. He now plans to sell the Yeezy brand directly to consumers, something he argued about with radio host Sway back in 2013. Or why don't you empower yourself and don't hmm. need them and do it yourself? How, fact, Sway? You take a few steps back to go... You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers. I, you ain't got the answers. This one is going to get me in trouble, all right? So Sway, almost 10 years ago, said, man, why don't you do it on your own? Was he right? You know what? I will go ahead and say Sway had the answer. Mm. I know people are going to be like, no. <laughs> and Ye, who ran for president in 2020, says his days in politics are not over. Do you have uh, future political aspirations? Yes, absolutely. My, the aspirations, you know, it's that time wasn't in God's time. I'm sure there's lives that were saved. I'm sure God had me fall on the sword and say this is not the time but you know he's a he's a redeemer fascinating and be sure to tune in for much more of Lindsay's conversation with yay later on hulu now we turn to our weekly segment TikTok, where we take a closer look at the story behind the sensation we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month at ABC News Live Prime. Our next guest has made a name for himself by debunking stereotypes and unpacking the truth about Latino and Caribbean history, even when it comes to the simplest of things like what to call a favorite fruit. Let's take a look. What's a canepa? That fruit basically has a variety of names called throughout the Caribbean and South America, but mostly in the Caribbean, they all stem from the same thing. So I know in Jamaica, they call it guinep. In Haiti, they call it kenep. Um, in Trinidad, they call it chenet. In Aruba, they also call it Kenepa, and in Guyana, they call it Guinepa as well. Joining us now is Senor Edison Lopez. Edison, great to have you here. We really do appreciate you taking the time tonight. Thank you, thank you for having me. You are known for regularly honoring the unique history, uh, culture, and accomplishments of the Hispanic and Latino community. What inspired you to use TikTok to share the facts about Hispanic heritage? Well, I started using TikTok back in 2019 when I was in high school. It was still like a pretty new app. I saw all the kids were on there. And so I said, let me give it a try. And then next thing you know, a few months later, I made one Puerto Rico video and it blew up. And then here I am now. <laughs> Many people may not realize this. And, and I do want to get into how you collect your facts and everything. But uh, during the colonial period, about 15 times as many slaves were taken to Latin America than the United States. You really prioritize educating people about the influence that African indigenous ancestors played uh, in modern day Latino culture. Um, what made you realize how important it was to open people's eyes to the richness of their own culture with, say, a stat like that? Um, well, I feel like a lot of people are like disconnected, especially here in the States. There's a lot of um, Puerto Ricans in the diaspora here that don't know too much about the, their culture. So like, I, when I get comments of people saying like, oh, you teach me so much about my culture, thanks for helping me reconnect, that motivates me. And so I love making the content that I make. You know, I have a passion for my own culture. Is that what you set out to do? Did you set out to educate and teach when you started this? 
no. No, I took it as like a kind of like a joke. I would just have fun on it. But then like having a following like um, gave me the passion to like want to educate people. I always loved my culture and stuff, but I never thought it, I had it in me to teach others. Was there a specific moment? Was there something someone said to you on TikTok? When did you realize that, hey, I could use this platform for, re I, for good? I could teach people things they need to know. Usually people's comments, but like also like out in public where people will come up to me and be like, oh my God, thank you so much. They'll thank me for like teaching. And I'm like, what? Why are you thanking me? Like to me, it's, I don't know, I'm doing it for fun. And then people recognize that and appreciate that for me. And I just think that's, that's crazy. It's I never cr thought. It's crazy. It's wonderful. And, you know, as a journalist, we do a lot of research. We compile facts. Um, I wanted to ask you, how much time do you spend researching and compiling uh, before you put out one of these videos in order to make sure your audience walks away with this real knowledge? Well, usually my videos are like a minute to two minutes long, but like the hours that are put into like the editing of these videos, right? Yeah, I take like two to three um, hours, not only like doing my research, watching documentaries, um, researching articles on the web, on the internet, but like adding the songs. Um, I, I'm really like detailed about like the music that's played when it comes in, the sound effects, the images that slide in. It takes a lot of time. Absolutely, and it's worth it. You're just watching you is so much fun too. I think that's part of it. You deliver it in a fun way. Um, your videos also touch on on cultural cu cuisines that are central to Latino life, like empanadas and pastelitos. Uh, tell oh, us yes. a little bit about what those dishes mean to Latino culture. So my favorite um, Hispanic food are empanadas. Each country has like their own variety of making them. Like they're all called empanadas, but each country has their own way of making it. So I started a series on making an empanada. One empanada from each country in Latin America. I haven't finished it yet, but I have to get back on my game. <laughs> how, how many empanadas is that gonna be? Oh, well, there's like, what, 21, 22 countries in Latin America, so I'm already, I'm, I don't even, I don't, I think I barely have 10, so. All right, a lot more halfway through, halfway through, you got your work cut out for you. Um, curious, what are some of the ways that you would like to see people recognize, honor Hispanic Heritage Month, not only in this month, but throughout the year? Um. Well, right now, uh, Puerto Rico just went through a hurricane, so I feel like people, as much as we're celebrating um, Hispanic heritage, I feel like we should um, make light on what's happening on Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Mexico. There's a lot of things going on, natural disasters. And so finding ways to support these people and you know bring light to the situations that are happening on our, in our countries. Yeah, and I, well. see that, I see that you focus on, on history and facts and teaching people, but I'm curious about you. Um, with the platform and brand that you've created for yourself, obviously very popular on TikTok, a TikTok, <laughs> um, what can we expect next from you? I have no idea. Right now I'm studying. I'm, I have one more year of college. I'm studying communications, multimedia studies. So I'm just going along with them, doing work and managing social media at the same time, and I'm just going with the flow. Yeah, all right. Well, the flow seems to be working for you. You can learn more helpful Hispanic heritage facts by watching his videos under the handle Senor Edison. Thank you. And before we go tonight, the image of the day, an aerial photo showing thousands of primary school students taking part in a calligraphy competition on a playground in Jiangsu province in China. That's our show for this hour. Stay with ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. I'm Phil Lipoff. Thanks for streaming with us. And coming up in the next hour, President Biden's promise to the people of Puerto Rico as they recover from Fiona and the alarming images that forced a United Airlines flight to Brazil to make an emergency landing. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any place else. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast, now streaming on ABC News Live. Elizabeth Holmes found guilty on four counts of fraud, facing the possibility of decades in prison. Now, we take you inside the courtroom and behind the scenes. The Dropout, Elizabeth Holmes on Trial. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. National parks are incredibly safe places. A crime will happen. Hey, my mom. My wife had fallen in really critical condition. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. There's still a lot of questions we need to ask. There were small things that didn't totally add up. 
This is two lives for Harold that have died now. I was shocked. Something's not right. Admit it. These days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. I'm Phil Lipoff in for Lindsay Davis. Thanks for streaming with us. We are monitoring several developments here at ABC News at this hour. The U.S. saw three 1,000-year floods in August alone. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has released its 2022 Summer Climate Report, which outlines the extreme weather events from June to August in the U.S. The summer of 2022 was the third hottest of all time, with an average temperature of nearly 74 degrees. And by the way, heat is the number one weather-related cause of death each year. A new global survey finds that the U.S. ranked 23 out of 122 countries in women's health and found record high levels of worry, stress, sadness, and anger among women worldwide. The report estimates that 1.5 billion women across the world lack screenings for cancer, heart disease, diabetes, or sexually transmitted diseases and infections. Some of the highest ranking countries were Taiwan, Denmark, and Germany. President Biden announcing the federal government will cover 100% of the costs related to the Hurricane Fiona cleanup for the next month and highlighted the trauma the Puerto Rican people are experiencing as they endure yet another major storm so soon after Hurricane Maria. Although the president did not say whether he has any plans to visit Puerto Rico himself, he did say he instructed his FEMA administrator to go in person to coordinate the aid. And we continue monitoring Hurricane Fiona as well. The monster storm expected to blast by Bermuda tonight before tracking toward Nova Scotia this weekend, creating rip currents up and down the East Coast. Behind Fiona, several tropical systems now churning over the Atlantic, including one that may pose a threat to the Gulf Coast. ABC's senior meteorologist Rob Marciano has the latest for us from Bermuda. Tonight, with Fiona's outer bands moving in, Bermuda is boarding up. Officials here sounding the alarm. We want residents to please take this storm seriously. Locals grabbing essentials while there's still time. Power crews assembled and ready. This is the time where Bermudans depend on us and we will rise and make sure that they are protected and that they get turned on as soon as possible. Hurricane Fiona is a category four beast. C-130s flying inside the storm, measuring hurricane force winds now out to 70 miles from the center. With the eye of Fiona, Forecast to pass west of the island. That puts Bermuda on the bad side of this storm. And you can see the waves turning here on the south coast. This is where the most punishing blow of Hurricane Fiona will be. As many as eight deaths across the Caribbean now attributed to Fiona. Four days after the storm made its first landfall in Puerto Rico. More than 900,000 customers remain without power there. And tonight, officials cannot say when it will be restored in the hardest hit areas. And Rob joins us now from Bermuda. Rob, give us Fiona's latest track. And I know you're also closely monitoring the tropics and a threat possibly to Florida or the Gulf Coast next week. Yeah, that's right, Phil. Very active and uh, very active here. As a matter of fact, last couple of hours on the south coast of Bermuda, we've seen the wind and the surf kick up. The center of the storm still 250 miles from our to our south and west, but accelerating in this direction. Here are the stats, the latest ones for Fiona. 130 mile an hour winds, and the movement now is at 20 miles an hour, and the satellite picture shows that 
that, uh, that eye, which is now 30 miles across, and the wind field expanding 450 miles across the tropical storm force winds. So it makes it a massive and a very damaging storm. Computer models showing it passing just to our west, but it's close to it's about 100 miles uh, abreast of us. So any jog to the east will be right in the thick of the cat two and three and four winds. Either way, we'll get slammed. And then it rockets off toward uh, Atlantic Canada and Nova Scotia, making a landfall there Saturday morning. And there will be a damaging extra tropical storm with hurricane force winds there. All right, uh, the uh, disturbance in the Caribbean you alluded to, this one is likely to become our next tropical storm. Probably by Monday, our computer models, you see all the different lines there. Most of them take it to the Gulf Coast or Florida sometime next week, and most of them also bring it to hurricane strength. So once we get through Fiona tonight and tomorrow, for our friends in Canada, uh, we've got something to worry about in the uh, always fearful Gulf of Mexico. Phil. Yeah, we knew it was a little too quiet uh, for comfort. Uh, Rob, outside of the tropics, when people on the East Coast wake up tomorrow, word is it will be clear that summer is over. All right, so it's all connected. Yeah, it's going to be cold tomorrow. That is a deep trough of cold air that's diving into the northeast. That's actually what's steering Fiona and will probably block the next storm and keep it towards the Gulf of Mexico as opposed to turning it out to sea. So it's involved, and it's you're going to feel it if you live in the northeast tomorrow. Look at some of these wind chills. This is the coldest air of the season. I uh, feel like a 40 or so in, in Boston, Scranton. On the way to the office, it'll feel like the upper 30s. So the puffy coats are coming out, Phil, <laughs> as we head now... Uh, getting closer to October and the first uh, day of fall. Fall begins tonight. Yes. It's a good thing I never really put mine away. All right, Rob, thanks so much. <laughs> Now to the war in Ukraine and Vladimir Putin under increasing pressure. The Russian president is calling up hundreds of thousands of reservists, a move that has prompted protests from some while others are just fleeing the country. Here's ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge. Tonight, the backlash in Russia as Putin moves to conscript men into the army to fight in Ukraine. <laughs> Protesters shouting, no war. And this man screaming, I won't die for Putin, before being led away. <laughs> Police arresting more than 1,300 people in 40 cities, according to human rights activists, who say some of those detained were then drafted to fight. And this the scene at Russia's land border with Georgia, lines more than 10 miles long, people trying to flee the country to avoid the draft. A travel data company tonight telling ABC News that there are no seats available on flights leaving Moscow for the next four days. Demand soaring for flights to nations like Armenia, Turkey and Serbia, where Russians can travel visa-free. And when Putin announced the draft, desperation online. Data from Google showing a spike with many Russians Googling how to break your arm at home. Now, Russia already mobilising men to fight relatives saying goodbye. And with Putin also moving to annex a large part of eastern and southern Ukraine, widespread condemnation of the UN. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken underlining Ukraine's existence is at stake. If Russia stops fighting, the war ends. If Ukraine stops fighting, Ukraine ends. David, tomorrow in Russian-occupied parts of Ukraine, the Russian-controlled authorities will begin their so-called referendums on joining Russia. One Russian-appointed official saying the authorities will be going door-to-door -door accompanied by the police so people can vote at home. Our thanks to Tom for that. Next, former President Trump was delivered a major legal setback in the battle over those classified documents from Mar-a-Lago. A three-judge appeals court sided unanimously with the Justice Department, allowing their criminal investigation to go forward. How is President Trump responding? Here's ABC's chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas. Tonight, Donald Trump dealt a blow by an appeals court panel of three federal judges, two of whom he appointed himself. They rule the Justice Department can once again start working with the more than 100 classified documents seized from Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. This is the former president claims he declassified those documents, making this highly questionable statement. If you're the president of the United States, you can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it. No, a president can't declassify sensitive documents just by thinking about it. There is a process. The appeals court was blunt ruling Team Trump had provided no evidence that any of these records were declassified. What's more, the judges write, 
we cannot discern why Trump would have an individual interest in or need for any of the 100 documents with classification markings. Finally, they say even if Trump did declassify the documents, that does not make them his property. Concluding, the declassification argument is a red herring because declassifying an official document would not change its content or render it personal. The appeals court ruling was a stinging rebuke to Florida Judge Aileen Cannon, a Trump appointee who, at his request, named an independent special master to review all 11,000 documents seized from Mar-a-Lago and refused to let the FBI keep working with the classified material. The appeals court determined Judge Cannon had likely abused her discretion that, of course, the FBI should be allowed to work with the material. The judge is writing, It is self-evident that the public has a strong interest in ensuring that the storage of the classified records did not result in exceptionally grave damage to the national security. But the former president now leveling unfounded accusations that perhaps the FBI had planted the documents. The problem that you have is they go into rooms, they won't let anybody near them. They wouldn't even let them in the same building. Did they drop anything into those piles? Or did they do it later? His attorneys have not made those claims in court where it is illegal to lie. And tonight, the special master telling them if they're going to make such damning accusations, they will have to provide proof. Our thanks to Pierre for that. Now we head overseas where the ire in Iran continues to build after the death of a young woman while in the custody of the morality police. Her crime, she's accused of violating the headscarf law. Uh, the protests ongoing for days now turning deadly. Here's ABC's chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raditz. Tonight, protests raging across Iran over the suspicious death of 22-year-old Masa Amini while in police custody. Amini arrested last week by Iran's so-called morality police who say that she was wearing her headscarf improperly. She reportedly collapsed and fell into a coma at a detention center and was later pronounced dead at a local hospital. Iranian authorities denying accusations that Amini suffered blows to the head during her arrest, saying it was a heart ailment that killed her. But her family disputes that claim, as do the thousands of Iranian women taking to the streets. <laughs> Videos filmed by demonstrators show women burning their headscarves or hijabs and cutting their hair. Clashes between police and protesters turning deadly. At least 17 have been killed. President Biden addressing the protests on the world stage. We stand with the brave citizens and the brave women of Iran who right now are demonstrating to secure their basic rights. The administration going further, saying the morality police are responsible for Amini's death, imposing sanctions on them as well as several senior leaders, quote, for abuse and violence against Iranian women and the violation of the rights of peaceful Iranian protesters. Today, the ultra-conservative president of Iran, Ibrahim Raisi, in New York, pressed by ABC News on the killing of Amini. What are you afraid the world is going to see? saying he has assured her family that the incident is being investigated, adding that deaths in police custody are not unique to Iran. Martha Raditz, thank you. A conspiracy theorist Alex Jones took the stand today at his defamation trial. Jones is trying to limit what he has to pay for promoting the lie that the 2012 Sandy Hook school shooting didn't happen. And he got combative today in court. Here's ABC's Ariel Rashef. Tonight, in a Connecticut courtroom just 20 miles from Sandy Hook, conspiracy theorist Alex Jones taking the stand, forced to face his own lies. For years, the InfoWars host called the massacre a hoax and the parents of those 20 first graders actors. Did you remember when we just played a video, not long ago, that I showed you on this very point where you said, it's not just one parent doing this, but a bunch of parents. Did you remember seeing the video? Seeing the video? Yes. That was you in it, right? Yes. You chose to say that. Nobody made you say yes. that, right? Parents like Robbie Parker, who lost his daughter Emily, say they were subjected to threats because of the lies Jones peddled to millions of followers. You put a target on his back, didn't you? You put a target on his back just like you did every single parent and loved one sitting here, didn't you? No, I didn't. These are real people. You know that, Mr. Jones? Jones sounding like the firebrand host he is. Just like all the Iraqis, but you liberals kill and love. 
It's just you're unbelievable. His attorney trying to stop the line of questioning. The judge frustrated. You want me to stop, stop your client from speaking? Physically, you want me to stop him from speaking? Ariel Rasha, thank you. Next to the alarming images that forced a United Airlines flight to make an emergency landing, the plane leaving from Newark headed to Brazil. Pilots had to circle over the Atlantic for nearly two hours before it was deemed safe to land. Gio Benitez reports. Tonight, this dramatic video capturing sparks streaming from a United Airlines plane just moments after it took off from Newark Airport. Now 149, Heavy, it looks like there's some sparks uh, that just uh, uh, came off the uh, possibly the left engine there. So with us. Sorry, say that again, United 149. Flight 149, leaving around 11 p.m. on Wednesday, headed to Sao Paulo, Brazil. On board, 256 passengers plus the crew. New footage showing sparks and debris falling from the Boeing 777, hitting parked cars below. Air traffic control quickly alerting the pilots. The aircraft circling several times over the Atlantic Ocean for nearly two hours, burning off fuel to lighten the plane before it returned to Newark. Uh, precautionary methodology would be to say, if we've got sparks coming out the back, maybe we better not dump fuel. Flying around a little bit to burn the fuel off is the best methodology. Tonight, United saying that the aircraft experienced a mechanical issue, apparently part of the hydraulic system, but that it did land safely. And Phil, just hours ago, those passengers were able to get on a different plane to Brazil. And of course, the FAA is now investigating. Phil. All right, Gio, thank you. And still to come, a look at the protests in Australia against the British monarchy following Queen Elizabeth's death as thousands call for more indigenous rights. And we're marking Hispanic Heritage Month with award-winning novelist Sandra Cisneros and her latest book of poetry, Women Without Shame. We'll be right back. This is ABC News Live. The crushing of families here in Poland. At refugee centers in Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. Here at the White House. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. We made it. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 12 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. As of today, in a big way, we have inaugurated ABCNews.com. A lot has changed in our world since Peter made that announcement. But what hasn't changed is the commitment to groundbreaking reporting and innovation at ABCNews.com. And here's to everything ahead. This is ABC News Live Prime. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Live reporting, breaking news, exclusives, award-winning, powerful, eye-opening. ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Streaming weeknights. Welcome back. We are tracking several headlines around the world at this hour. Thousands of people across Sydney and Melbourne protested the National Day of Mourning for Queen Elizabeth while calling for more indigenous rights. Protesters denounced the monarchy and the impact of colonization. Today was declared a national holiday across Australia to mourn the Queen who died on September 8th. Less than two weeks away from the Brazilian election, a record number of indigenous leaders are protesting against policies implemented by President Bolsonaro by running for office. Most of the leaders running are women who seek to protect indigenous territories and the Amazon rainforest. A Myanmar model who spoke out against a military coup in her country and has since been a, refu a refugee in Thailand has been blocked 
from returning to Bangkok. The model did not have a valid visa to enter Thailand, according to the Immigration Department, and was denied entry when returning to the country from Vietnam. In her new best-selling poetry book, Women Without Shame, award-winning American novelist Sandra Cisneros explores the true meaning of rebirth, a culmination of poems dedicated to women and a look into Sandra's experiences migrating from Mexico to Chicago. Best known for the coming-of-age novel, The House on Mango Street, Sandra provides a lens into the harsh reality of growing up as a Latina in Chicago. Sandra, welcome to the show. So good to have you here. Welcome to you, to my world. Yeah, and it's a wonderful world at that. It's been nearly three decades since you've published a poetry book. Three decades. Why did you feel like this was the right time to share these particular never-before-seen-or-heard poems? Well, I didn't decide to tell you the truth. I would still be writing them and throwing them under the bed if it wasn't for my <laughs> editor and my agent, because I'm never finished. I'm always writing and throwing them under the bed and saying they need their beauty sleep, so I thank other people in my life. Is this a good time for these particular, the, this particular collection of poems to, to get out there into the world, even though they may have been forced at times by your editor? I think it's time for everybody to write poetry, and I hope these poems will inspire people to pick up their pen and do some heart cleaning. You know how you have to do house cleaning? We have to do heart cleaning. Uh, we're living in a time of a lot of sorrow because of the pandemic, a lot of polarities politically, a lot of frustration and depression and anger. That's all heart cleaning that needs to get done. If you're in some place where your emotions control you, you need to write poetry because poetry Poetry is about uh, transforming those demons before they demonize us. I knew it wouldn't be long before you said something that I had to write down. Heart cleaning. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Um, this collection I just made was. That up. <laughs> you just made that up right now? That's really impressive, which means your poetry is also amazing. Uh, the collection was also translated into Spanish. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the importance of eliminating the language barrier to, to connect with another layer of your heritage, providing this guide for Latinas. I think it's important for everybody to learn another language, whether it's the language of your ancestors or not, because it helps you to see the world in another way. You know, when people translate or live between languages or have more than one language, you understand that the languages can't be translated like this. There are inter dices between them where they don't intersect. Beautifully said. Um, death is often a sensitive topic uh, for a lot of people, but you're bringing it to the forefront in this new book. In your poem, Instructions for My Funeral, we want to write this, uh, get this down. You say, send no ashes north of the Rio Bravo on penalty of curse. I belong here under Mexican maguey beneath a, a carved mesquite bench that says ni modo. Spell my name with mezcal. Uh, talk to us about uh, the way you talk about death in a humorous way when typically it's a conversation not only many people shy away from, many people are afraid to have. Yeah, I think in the United States, people are afraid of death, but those of us who come from indigenous cultures like Mexico or from India or China or or other countries that have a great tradition of connecting with the deceased. You know, you prepare your whole life for that crossing and you're not afraid of it. And I think in the United States, we can learn from the spiritual first world. And I think Mexico is part of that spiritual first world that has integrated life with death, who they celebrate it with Day of the Dead, and we walk alongside our dead daily. We send in a, a, a police and and we send in guns, but we don't send in the heart workers, heart workers. And that is what the artists are. They help us to transform our grief to light and understand uh, the connection with the spirit world. So I think anytime there's a tragedy, we should be calling in, especially people from the spiritual first world. Um, just lastly, before we let you go, and I could talk to you for an hour and a half about all this, um, but before we let you go, messages, what messages do you hope readers will take from this book? And there, it's a collection of poems, but what, what are the key messages? 
Well, people don't know much about poetry, and they were not taught poetry well because their teachers didn't understand poetry. So I hope they understand that poetry is something we all need to do daily, just like we need to get up and have your cup of coffee to clear your head. You need to clear your heart. I hope that they will grab a pen and write poetry, not to publish it or share it, but just to learn about themselves and to make themselves better human beings, to be able to confront whatever sorrows or joys uh, they are suffering especially right now with our hearts broken open because of the pandemic yeah and and so many other things that you mentioned like uvalde and el paso um sandra so so wonderful a pleasure having you on the show today really do appreciate talking to you women without shame is out now wherever books are sold and still to come the young boy who's become a viral music sensation you're gonna want to see this stay with us we'll be right back Right now, with so much at stake, Sunday mornings, this is the place. Taking on all the tough questions, straightforward reporting, no spin, no hype, no bull. Thank you for making ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos the number one Sunday morning news show versus the competition. Welcome to This Week. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24 Seven, there for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. This is ABC News Live Prime. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Live reporting, breaking news, exclusives, award winning, powerful, eye opening. ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Streaming weeknights. Ready for a little GMA ish promo? Okay, here we go. GMA 7A every day with Robin, George, and Michael. That's how you start the day. Boom! America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. Finally tonight, nobody ever told one little boy from Colorado that he would be jamming till the break of dawn. He just sat down one day and did it. And now he's become not only a local celebrity, but a viral sensation. Danny New from our local station, Denver 7, has tonight's local lowdown. It's really not often that a 10-year-old can give keyboard lessons to himself. One day I was here watching the news when I heard him play something on... There's a small keyboard down the basement. So I grabbed my phone and went down there and I'm like, dude, play that again. This was in February of last year when Jude, who has autism, made his father realize that his youngest son could basically hear anything and then figure out how to play it immediately. So you could imagine the reaction from his parents. The Lord is good. Especially for his father, who was a musician in his home country of Ghana before moving to America. I had that dream of being able to play for a big, on a big stage, but I got here, I couldn't do that, so I'm like, okay, then I want the kids to do it. Jude was born with low oxygen levels and had to have heart surgery as a baby. He even needed a feeding tube in his stomach until he was eight. But Jude is a fighter and has thankfully mostly recovered now. As you can tell, it's kind of hard to break his spirit. Do you know you're doing that or it just all comes out? <laughs> Maybe it just all comes out. <laughs> Now at 11 years old, Jude is all over YouTube. He plays weddings. He's the lead keyboardist at their church in Aurora. And that's him. We'll even jam with beginners. All that talent and a smile and an infectious laugh to boot. All right, that was Danny New from our local station, Denver 7. Danny, thank you. That's our show for tonight. Stay with ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. I'm Phil Lipoff. Thanks for streaming with us. America's number one news, ABC News.
most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news. Free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and